Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. So if you are new here, my name is Amina and I would love for you guys to subscribe. As I mentioned previously, I have two slots in the week where I post videos, Mondays and Thursdays. And at Thursday, I will be posting an educational video. So it could be anything to do with careers, life, jobs, work, school, keep motivated, a balanced life, anything to do with that. And on Monday, it will be something else. So it could be fashion, it could be vlogs, it could be travel, it could be anything else. In today's Thursday video, I want to talk about what you can do on your travel to work. I know in loads of cities around the world, especially in London, the average commute is at least one hour. During my masters, I was traveling for at least an hour from East London to West London. And this is a lot of time. So when you add up the time during the day when you're actually traveling, it can add up to more than two and a half hours during the day, which is a lot of time to spend doing Doing nothing. Why not use that time from, for some sort of mental enrichment or to learn something or to just sit there and reflect. So I want to talk about eight things that you can do on your commute in order to have a more fulfilled journey and in order to use your time a bit more wisely. So my first thing is to read a book. You can split this into a few categories. So you can have an audio book where you've downloaded someone that's reading it for you and you just put that in your ears and you just have to listen to that and that's fine as well. There's another way that you can read a book is by downloading a PDF version of that book or of a text that you want to read and you can just have it on your phone and read that on your phone and there are some apps that you can use for reading books or you can just download it and save it onto your Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that. But the way that I find the best and the way that I enjoy the most is by actually just getting the hard copy of the book and just sitting there and actually opening the pages. There's a certain type of comfort that I find from actually flicking through pages of paper. I, I prefer that to looking at my phone because it's the one time that I feel like I can just switch off and not have technology in front of my face. I know that once I get to work I'm going to be sitting in front of a computer screen so why not use that time to just not look at any screens or any LCD and just have a traditional book that you can read. At the moment I'm reading uh, Every Woman by Jess Phillips. The second thing that you can do is you can learn a language. Now I actually learn French, well I can understand it, I can, I can kind of understand it um, for the most part, but I learnt French and I also learnt a lot of Arabic on my tube journeys. I picked up a few books and I also downloaded Duolingo which is an app that you can use to test yourself. So Duolingo has French, I'm not sure if they have Arabic now but they didn't before. So for Arabic what I was doing was I was looking at different vocabulary lists, so I just downloaded the top thousand words that are used in Arabic and I would just read the vocabulary lists. So one thing about learning a language is that your confidence is usually quite low when it comes to speaking. Like my listening is always better than my speaking because I just feel like I don't have the words to use, I don't have the sentences, I don't have the vocabulary. So by knowing more words, I feel more confident in actually putting them together and making sentences and actually using them. I was also looking at sentence starters and like reading Arabic texts. Um, looking at French newspapers or just reading random French or listening to some French music but just trying to get myself um, more accustomed to that language and I learnt so much in just one year. The third thing is that you can just listen to a podcast. I have got a video um, where I talked about my top 10 podcasts for intellectuals and I will link that in the description bar down below and I'm trying to put it here if I can figure out how to do that. Um, so I I think it's really, I think it's quite a cool way to engage with media or to engage with a certain topic or to learn something. And you know, in the morning you might be a bit slow and you might have, it might be like, you know, it might be 7am, 8am, you don't have the energy to open a book and to read it, but you can just put something in your ears, sit back and just observe the world while listening to something. I think it's a really nice way to like enrich yourself and enrich your knowledge while still being relaxed and not having to put too much into it. I have a new podcast that I've started to listen to. It's called Amalia Voices. It's by three Muslim women who just talk about things that are overrated, underrated, have discussions, debates. I think it's a really nice platform that allows people to understand the voices of Muslim women in um, the Western world, essentially. The fourth thing is that you can just be mindful. Like, you don't actually have to do anything. Just reflect. You can just reflect upon things that you have to do during the day or maybe things that you did yesterday or maybe things that you want to do in the future. If you want to pray and you've got a faith or you're religious that you can just pray in your head. During the day seldom do we get time to actually just 
think we we're always doing something we're always being stimulated by in some way or another but this is a good opportunity to just put everything away and just to sit there and just just to think for that half an hour of that hour i think it's a really important thing and as especially as muslims we're told to reflect all the time and if you don't reflect you'll never know how you can get better so i think it's really important that we use that time in order to just reflect on ourselves and the things that we want to improve on. The next thing is that you can use that time to create yourself a to-do list or to make your, your own goals for the day. I think it's a really good way to be a bit organized because by the time you get to work or get to wherever you're going, you then have your to-do list already made for you. So you've kind of thought it out um, you've, un you've kind of you've organized your day you've thought out the things that you need to do and you've written them down so once you get to work it's just go 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 there's none of that going to work taking a seat thinking about what you have to do spending two hours trying to figure that out and then starting your day by the time you start your day it's lunch time and it's just like your whole day is gone but if you're able to dedicate maybe half an hour on your commute to be able to just write yourself a little to-do list or things that you want to achieve during that day be it to do with work or be it to do with your own personal life then at least you're giving yourself that platform where you've done that and you are able to get to work and be more efficient and just be more organized with your own day the sixth thing that you can do which i definitely spend my time doing is replying back to emails or replying back to messages it could even be personal messages but just spending that time to clean up your phone i know that when i have unread messages or messages that i've read and i know i need to reply to it just weighs me down like weights on my shoulder it really weighs me down because the whole day i'm thinking i need to reply to that email i need to reply to this person this person's waiting for me to reply to them and it just gives me this un unnecessary anxiety and stress for no reason so just using that time in the morning just to reply back to all the messages that you have and clearing you having just having a clean slate in your phone knowing that you've done something that could potentially take you a few hours later on in the day when you're less efficient. The seventh thing that I did a lot of when I was traveling for like two hours for my masters to get to Imperial College is to just to read articles. Now this is very different to reading books because books are obviously you have one book and you're reading a book and that's it. Whereas when you're reading articles and, and kind of like published papers, you're reading a few of them at the same time and you're also making notes. I find reading articles and reading journals quite boring and quite monotonous and sometimes they're just too like text heavy and it's just it's quite hard to read when you're just sitting down but on the tube i was able to i had an ipad and i was able to save all my research papers on mendeley which is an app that allows you to download papers offline so and then i'll make notes and i'll tell myself where the that information is kept so when i come to writing my thesis or my research paper i know that i've read all my information and i know where to grab it from instantaneously so i didn't have to spend you know, hours and hours and days reading through papers later on. And I did that during a time where I was going to sit around and do nothing anyway. So I think it's really, you know, I think it's a really good thing to maybe do some work, especially if you're a student. And the last thing that I would recommend is to listen to some lectures. Now, it doesn't have to be related to your education or your school or your work, but there are so many like online universities or kind of distance learning courses that you can you can you can gain qualifications from. And it could be anything. Like I'm a, you know I'm a scientist. I've got a science background, but I can learn about I don't know marketing. Or I can learn about. I don't know fashion or something else and it doesn't have to benefit me in my career but it just gives me that mental stimulation gives me that kind of enriched learning and extra knowledge that you know I think we should always be I think we should always be learners and we should always try to increase our knowledge in whatever capacity it's really poignant to note that language has been around longer than reading and writing in fact in the early times people used to learn through listening and through speech more than they did through reading and writing the way we do now you know it's reflected in how the Quran is revealed as well for example is revealed um, through hearing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa didn't have couldn't read or write and he learnt through through listening so i think it's really important for us to sometimes just to listen to things and not necessarily always be kind of head in a book or writing or trying to read things but just to sit there and just to take in learning and understanding through our ears and i know that there are loads of courses that are um, available online for free and i'll try to find a few websites i think the open university have a few courses as well but i try to find a few and link them down below but it's definitely something that you could look into two hours a day is about the same time as i had some lectures during my undergraduate degree so to think that you're also spending the same amount of time doing nothing i could potentially get another undergraduate degree in that time so i think it is really important for us to try to learn something and benefit ourselves in whatever way and um, without the pressure of it having to link to our career so it can just be something that we just totally enjoy and we have no kind of 
career benefits or financial benefits from it and we just want to learn something because you know learning should be fun and I think that we should just want to learn for the sake of it. I hope that that helped you with trying to identify a few things that you might want to pick up in your commute. I really saw a huge difference in the languages that I was learning so I hope that you enjoyed this video and let me know what more you want to see from me and let me know what you guys do during your commute because I'd love to be able to add some more things onto my to-do list. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. My handles will be up there somewhere. And I will have to love you and leave you. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!